Hello YouTube, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com. Before watching this video, I'd like to let you know that I have over 500 similar videos available on my site, CodeReviewVideos.com. If you love Symfony, then you'll feel right at home here. I'll show you how to build both websites and JSON APIs, and then we're going to talk to those JSON APIs using React and Redux. There's courses on Docker and Ansible, as well as loads on deployment and test-driven development and behavior-driven development. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com. And in this video, we're continuing on with our introduction to Symphony 4. So towards the end of the previous video, we created a single route, which when accessed would render out the contents of our template, which was the hello page template and return that as the body of our response. So we could see if we refresh now on the slash, we're seeing our output. And again, you can see the output of the debug router command shows that we have hello page set up. And we saw that whilst we didn't need to create our own controller class, we were still using both a controller class, the template controller, and also a controller method, the template action, in order to make this work. Now this structure called template action, this was in Symfony 2 and Symfony 3, the typical name that we would name our controller methods. Now in Symfony 4, this would more likely just be template, and we'll see this again momentarily. Now I also mentioned that whilst this is quite interesting, it's quite nerdy to know about, in the real world, it's very unlikely that you're going to go down this route too often. Typically, you would create your own controller class and your own controller methods. And so that's what we're going to get onto in this video. So I'm just going to start by clearing that off with a control L and then we'll do a PHP bin console and we'll put in just make. And you can see the command make itself is not defined, but in the make namespace, there's a bunch of different things that we can use this console command line helper to help make. Of course, the one that we're interested in at this point in time is the controller, but you can see there are other things that we can make along the way. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow and I'm going to make a new controller. So it's asking me to choose a name for my controller class. I'm just going to call it the welcome controller. So it says it's created our new controller class in source controller, welcome controller, open up your controller class and add some pages. So let's have a look under source controller. We've now got our welcome controller. It's created as this index controller method and it's going to be available using routing annotations on slash welcome. So immediately before we do anything else, let's just control L that. Do a bin console debug router to see if we can see this new route. And we can, and it's right at the top. So the ones that we create in YAML are at the bottom and the ones that we create using annotations will be at the top. Not entirely sure why that is. I'm guessing it's the order in which they're parsed. Just as a heads up though, you're at the top here. So slash welcome should be immediately available to us as long as your web server is still up and running. And you can see you've just generated a new controller. And we've not had to create this template. That's been done for us. So let's jump back into our code and see why that is. So you can see that the view or the template in this instance actually lives in this maker bundle and the maker bundle is provided as one of the dependencies when we've installed the website skeleton. So this at symbol before tells it to look at a bundle. And we can command click on a Mac. It's going to take us there. I've clicked on the bundle name rather than the demo page. But if we click on the demo page, we can see this is the contents of that page. It's got some style built in. And then it's got that you just generated a new controller text. And it, as you can see, it lives inside the maker bundle, which is in the vendor directory, which means it's code that we've pulled in. It's not code that we directly control. So I'm just going to get rid of that for the moment. And before we go ahead and get rid of this and recreate it using our own logic, I want to just firstly expand out this use block. So we can see it's come with our routing annotation, which we're using here. And we're also extends controller. So we're using that one. But it's come with this third one, which we're not using. So if we hover over in PHP Storm, it's going to say this import is never used. It's quite unusual. It's been generated, but we're not using it. So Symfony controller methods always have to return a response. And we'll see this in a sec. And this is the response object that we must return. Now this render, if we control and click on that or command and click on it, is a convenience method provided to us by the controller trait. And we'll look at that in a moment, which does two things. It takes our twig template and converts it or renders it from twig into usable HTML in our case. And then it sets it as the response body, as you can see the response set content call, and then it returns that response object. So whatever we do from a controller action, we have to return a response. Symphony is all about the journey from request to response. That means from a very high level, your request or your visitor's request comes in for a page, stuff happens, and then that page is created as HTML or whatever, 
and then we send it back and that's the response. Symphony is really just a structure around that process. So if we get rid of these two lines and we go back and we try and visit our welcome page, we're going to get a nice error that says controller must return a response but null was given. Did you forget to add a return statement somewhere in your controller? Like Yes, we did. We just deleted it. So what we can do is we can take this unused response and we can actually use it. We could say return a new response and if we command and p inside there we can see that the first argument must be a string some content this can be a bit of html or it can just be raw text or whatever second argument needs to be some status code and then we could set some headers as the third argument so to begin with i'll just return a raw string which will just be hello and i'll do the sort of the naive thing there and just return an, an integer as a status code which is 200 which should be http ok or in other words a good status code so we refresh and we see our hello text but the web debug toolbar has gone so let's try and get the web debug toolbar back so in order to do that we have to have some basic html so i'm just going to set up a html wrapper put something in the body and just make sure to close off that html tag and then rather than using a direct integer one of the nice things about the response object is that it comes with a bunch of defined constants and we can just click through and have a look at what they are, all the different status codes that you might want to use. So the one that I'm after is HTTP OK. Now, of course, using an integer is no different really than using the defined constant, but the defined constant does explain what that status code actually is. So let's just try and refresh that now. And we can see that the web debug toolbar comes back for us and that's because that's injected for us behind the scenes but it needs to rely on that closing body tag so we'll see in a, in a sec when we get to it that when we render out our twig templates if we forget to render out any of the expected html so just the html and the body wrapper then we'll still miss out on that web debug toolbar injection now if i get rid of that and i do a return of this render like we had before then you may be wondering where render comes from and I, I kind of alluded to this when we control clicked and we saw that it was available to us and it's available on the controller trait but where is the controller trait being used so a controller trait is just something provided by symphony it's in this controller directory but where we get access to it is because we extends controller so if we click on that and we can see that we extends controller and controller is just an abstract class from that same namespace that we've just been looking at where our controller trait lived and we can see that because we extends controller and controller uses the controller trait, that's how we get access to this render. Now, again, just like when we created this and, and we got this unwanted use statement, so we'll just get rid of that for the moment. The way in which our controller classes are created is a little bit unusual too, because instead of extends controller, it's actually preferable inside the best practices to extends abstract controller instead. So we'll just change this up they both live in the same namespace so again we can just click through to that and we can see everything's still inside this controller directory we now extends abstract controller instead of before we just extends controller they're largely similar it's just abstract controller is actually a little bit more restrictive it stops you from accessing the container directly it instead expects you to inject any necessary dependence so this is getting a little bit more advanced. We don't need to know too much about that at the moment. We're going to cover that a little later in this course. But just know that it's better to extend abstract controller. So if you're going to generate, then first delete that unwanted or unused use statement and also then change up to be extends abstract controller. And again, that's what gives us access to all these convenience methods, such as being able to redirect and easily add flash messages and stuff. And we'll, again, we'll get onto all of that a little bit later in this course. I'm going to get rid of that response object as well. And next, I'm going to define my own. And I'm going to start by defining a new template. So under templates, just get rid of that vendor directory. It's taking up a lot of space. I'm just going to create a new directory under here, which I'm going to call welcome, simply because this is the welcome controller and it matches up. So it's easy to figure out where stuff is in the future. Go in lowercase, it's just convention. And I've got the index controller method. So I'm going to name this the index HTML twig template. Again, it just helps tie up your templates to your controller methods and so on. As your project grows, that is helpful. So I've got a template already. This is using Bootstrap 4. It's a pretty straightforward thing that I've just basically stolen directly from Bootstrap and made a couple of little tweaks. It should have a little bit of a nav bar going on, which has our home link in there. Uh, the href is not correct at the moment. And also we've got this hello page which is what we created over there before. So I'm just going to set this to be slash hello in line with what's in the template. And I'm going to make my welcome controller just be 
the site route. So whenever I hit the site route, I should hit the welcome controller. And specifically, if I go to slash hello, I should see this earlier page that we created. So let's go ahead and render this out now. So we've got our return, this render call inside our index controller method. And this is now inside the welcome directory under index. So I'm just going to render out welcome index. Okay, so we're on slash. Let's just bring that back up to make sure that everything's looking okay. So now things have swapped around. We've got welcome on slash and hello page on slash hello. So I'm just going to go to the site route. And we can see our basic page. Be nice maybe to push this text down a bit. And to do that, we're going to need a custom style sheet. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the easiest way. But Symphony 4 is pushing Webpack Encore, which is a little bit more advanced than what we're going to need here. In a real world project, when building a real website, you may have heard of Webpack. And you may also have heard how complicated Webpack is to set up. Well, Symphony's Webpack Encore is all about simplifying Webpack. It also changes the way that you work with your assets. So for example, your CSS and your JavaScript and any other stuff like SCSS or anything like that inside a standard Symfony project. And if we go into that, that's like kind of another rabbit hole that we go down. And it also involves you having Node installed on your machine, which you may already do, you may not. But to keep things as simple as possible, I'm just going to go with a more basic approach. And if you look inside the write-up for this video, you'll find a link to Webpack Encore. And there's a nice little sort of do-it-yourself. Try adding that in. It is very useful, but it's just a little bit outside the scope of what we can cover in this particular video. So because we're not using Webpack Encore, we're going to need to do things a little bit more manually. So in previous versions of Symphony, you had the web directory. And the web directory was anything that was publicly available. In Symphony 4, we have the public directory, which is basically exactly the same thing. So because our style needs to be publicly available, I'm going to create myself a new directory under here called CSS. And in here, I'm just going to call this mystyle.css. Okay, so if we look inside our index HTML, the content that we want to push down is in the main block. And it has a class of container and a class of main. So I'm just going to use that class of main I'm going to define a little style that says margin top, push down by 20 pixels. Okay, style's not my all time favorite thing, honestly, but that should be good enough. Now, in order to use this, and get rid of that, confusing myself, get rid of that as well. Go back to our index. We need a way to call that style sheet from our HTML. So I'm going to put this after the bootstrap style. And the reason I would suggest doing this is because firstly, all the bootstrap stuff, all the bootstrap CSS, should I say, is going to be processed. And then we want our CSS to be able to easily override the bootstrap styles if needed. We don't need to in this particular case, but ordering does matter with styles. So ours should come later. It just stops you from having to put exclamation mark important behind all your styles. If you've ever got into that situation, you'll know what I mean. And so we'll need to add in a new link tag. We'll call it rel of style sheet. And then the href, you might think is just slash CSS. And then our style, I think is just called my style. So like CSS, my style, dot CSS like that. And that would work, but it's also problematic. Depending on the hierarchy that you have set up with Twig, that may not work depending on where you are in that hierarchy. A much better way is to use the asset function, which is a Twig extension function, which is provided by the website skeleton. But if you're not using the website skeleton, you would need to do a composer require asset to get access to this function. So we'll say asset, and then we just pass in the path. So it's just... CSS, my style, if I can spell my style.css. And this delegates the hard work of figuring out where we are in the hierarchy to the asset function. And then that should mitigate any circumstances where our paths break when we're nested. If you don't understand any of that, don't worry about it. I would just suggest always using the asset function. And anyway, as you can see, our style has been properly applied. Now, there's one other thing that I want to cover before we finish up in this video. And this is something that I think is really cool as part of Symfony. It's not actually new in Symfony 4, but all the same, this is a really useful feature that I've not seen in other frameworks that I've used in other languages as well. So if we go back into our template, I said that we have this home path, which is not quite set. So maybe it should be slash. That makes sense. And we know that our other route slash hello is also slash hello. Okay. So now if we go back to our page and we refresh, we should be able to hit hello page, which comes with its own set of problems. And we're going to address this in the next video. And if we go back, 
then our home should be working as well because that should just be the slash. Now, the thing is, we can change these paths. We already have seen this throughout this series. We could go back in and change this to hello slash page or hello dash page or some other nested path. And we could even change the root if we were so inclined. So what Symfony does is it provides us with another one of these helper functions called path. So instead of just using a hard coded root, we can use the root name. So again, if we go back to our controller, we can see that the root name for the site root is actually welcome. So if we use the path of welcome, now when we go and change that actual path, anywhere that's referencing path welcome will automatically update. Likewise, we should do the same here. And I think this was just path of hello page. Okay, so if you've got the Symphony plugin for PHP Storm, it's going to provide you with the autocomplete on some of this stuff. So highly worth getting. Got a video on that on the site as well. Okay, so we should be able to go back, give that, not try and save the page. If we refresh, then we should see that these links still work. That's all good. And to illustrate this point, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and change the hello page path to be something different. So under our roots YAML, if we go and change this to be hello something different, and then just go back and refresh this. We didn't need to change it inside Twig, but it's already picked it up, as you can see at the very bottom of your screen. We can browse to that. And the path's updated, but we didn't need to change anything in the template. Whilst that's really useful when you've got a template that's you know quite simple, like what we've got here, it becomes even more useful the more that you have these links dotted around your site, which on a real site is probably going to be in more than one place. So just as a big heads up, don't hard code, use the path, or if it's an asset, use the asset. Now, as I mentioned, we've got all this nice style set in here. And yet, if we go to the hello page, then we've lost all that style. Now, the last thing that we want to do is have to copy paste all of this stuff into multiple different templates. There is a better solution to that, and we're going to get onto that in the very next video.